Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with Yoshi and that is because we are going to be talking about crested geckos. So why exactly am I here talking about crested geckos? Crested geckos are an absolutely amazing pet gecko that I just completely adore. I have been keeping crested geckos for about four or five years now and I currently have four of them. I have Yoshi here, I have Dorito, I have Oliver, and then I have my new baby gecko who does not yet have a name. So not only do I love crested geckos, but a lot of other people out there do as well. Crested geckos are by far one of the most common pet reptiles out there. And for a very good reason. Their care is quite friendly for beginners and new reptile keepers, but they also make wonderful pets for people of all experience levels. Whether you are just starting out or you have owned reptiles for 10 years, years, you will still probably like a crested gecko. So today I am going to be talking to you all about how I care for my crested geckos. Now before we get on with this video, I do feel like it is important to give a little bit of a disclaimer. While I do have many years experience with crested geckos, both personally and professionally, I am by no means an expert and I am really just speaking from my own experiences. When you are considering a new pet, it is important to do plenty of research from multiple different sources. So if you are someone who is considering a pet crested gecko, please don't watch this video and take everything here as fact. Make sure you are doing research in other places as well to get as much information as you possibly can. While I'm obviously going to try my best to give you lots of good information, it is absolutely impossible as I was saying, it would be impossible for me to cover every single little thing out there, so make sure you do research from multiple different sources before you get a pet. And I do also want to say that this information that I'm giving you in this video is completely based off of my own experiences. When it comes to caring for animals, there is not always just one way to do things. There are many different methods of care out there, and mine is not the only correct one. I'm a big fan of keeping reptiles in naturalistic setups, and that is what I aim for when it comes to my own animals. So the information I'm going to be giving you today is going to be based off of naturalistic crested gecko care. So if you are interested in learning about how I personally care for my crested geckos, let's just get on with the video. So before we start actually talking about the care of crested geckos, I want to talk about crested geckos themselves for a quick second. So crested geckos are a species of gecko that comes from the islands of New Caledonia. Crested geckos were once believed to be extinct in the wild, but despite that, there have always been a lot of them in captivity. So when you're caring for a reptile, one of the most important things you need to know is how to set up their enclosure. When it comes to housing my adult crested geckos, I like to keep them in small, tall exoterra terrariums. So these enclosures measure 18 inches wide, 18 inches deep, and 24 inches tall. In my opinion, this is a good minimum size for an adult crested gecko. And note that I said minimum. An 18, 18, 24 will do just fine for your crested geckos, but if you want to go bigger, then you completely can and your gecko will definitely appreciate it. Now obviously you do not have to use this exact design of enclosure, there are plenty of others out there, but I would use this one at least as a good size reference. Crested geckos are an arboreal species of of animal, which means they spend most of their time up climbing in the trees and vines and such. So since these animals are arboreal, it's important to get an enclosure that has a decent amount of height. Your crested gecko is going to benefit more from having height than they are from having a lot of width, so a short, wide enclosure is not really going to be suitable for one. So this is what I would recommend for an adult. However, when it comes to caring for baby or younger geckos, I have personally found Found that they tend to do better in a smaller enclosure. Technically, yes, you can go and put a baby right in their adult size enclosure, but I find that their growth is a bit slower and they don't have as much confidence. When it comes to younger geckos, I think they can benefit from a smaller enclosure such as a 12 by 12 by 18 exoterra 
or for hatchlings, possibly something even smaller. When you are choosing your enclosure, I would also recommend getting something with solid sides as opposed to a screen enclosure. The screen enclosures don't hold in humidity very well. Crested geckos aren't super sensitive when it comes to things like airflow and they benefit from high humidity. So I would definitely recommend a solid side enclosure over a screen enclosure. So once you have your enclosure picked out, you're going to need to know how to set it up. So as I mentioned earlier, crested geckos are arboreal, so keep that in mind when you're setting up their enclosure. Your crested gecko isn't really going to benefit from plants and hides and stuff that just sit on the ground. Your crested gecko is going to benefit from things that they can climb on and explore all throughout the enclosure. So when you're picking out supplies to set up your enclosure, look for things like branches and vines and tall plants. At the bottom of the enclosure, you are going to want some sort of substrate. When it comes to my adult geckos, I personally like to keep them on a bioactive substrate mix, but you don't have to do this if you're not doing a bioactive enclosure. For an adult gecko, I would personally recommend some sort of soil mix. Now you can make this bioactive if you want to, or you can just leave it as your soil mix. However, when it comes to raising younger geckos, I typically like to keep them on something simple like paper towels. Some people do like to use paper towels all throughout their lives, right up into adulthood, but personally, I like to move them onto a loose substrate once they get bigger. A benefit to having a nice soil mix as your substrate is that you are going to be able to put live plants in it. Like I mentioned earlier, when you're setting up the enclosure, you want to build up and think about what is going to fill in that space, and live plants are absolutely fantastic for that. When setting up your crested gecko's enclosure, I would highly recommend using live plants, but you don't need to. Whether you choose to use live plants, fake plants, or maybe a mixture of both, you just want to make sure that you have quite a few of them. These plants are going to provide your gecko a place to hide. They're going to provide some enrichment to your gecko, and they're also going to provide them leaves to drink off of. Crested geckos very often like to drink water droplets off of leaves rather than drinking from a bowl. So having lots of plants in their enclosure is very beneficial to them. But you don't wanna just fill up your enclosure with plants because plants, whether they're real or fake, don't always offer a lot of support for the gecko to climb on. So adding things in the enclosure like branches and vines is a great way to give your gecko areas to explore and walk on and climb on. And when setting up their enclosure, also make sure that you have a space for their feeding area. And if you do choose to do a bioactive setup, then don't forget that you're also going to want a drainage layer in your enclosure. So now that we've talked about the enclosure and setup, let's move on and discuss a crested gecko's heating, humidity, and lighting needs. So crested geckos, unlike a lot of reptiles, do not actually need very high temperatures at all. A lot of times when people think of reptiles, they associate them with like heat lamps and just needing a lot of heat, but that is not the case for crested geckos. Crested geckos often enjoy similar temperature ranges as us humans, which thankfully makes them quite easy to keep in our homes. For most people who keep pet crested geckos, a heat source is not needed unless you happen to live in an area that gets really cold or if your house just gets really cold. My crested gecko enclosures are typically right around 76 degrees Fahrenheit, and they are completely comfortable at that temperature. When it comes to heat and crested geckos, it can actually be a little bit risky. I really wouldn't recommend having your crested gecko's temperatures go over like 82 if you can avoid it. Typically, if you're staying in the like 70 to 80 degree range, your crested gecko is going to be happy. And for a lot of people, that is just the temperature that their houses stay at. Now, if it does happen to be a bit cold inside your house and you do think your gecko will need a bit of a heat source, I would recommend something like a deep heat projector or a ceramic heat emitter that doesn't give off any light as you can then leave it on 24 seven and you don't have to worry about your gecko getting too cold overnight. Make sure you avoid things like red heat lamps. Despite what they say, they are not good for reptiles and yes, your reptile can actually see them. 
If you are only looking for a bit of extra heat during the daytime though, then you could use something like a halogen bulb or just a regular basking bulb. But if you do choose to use a heating source, then just make sure that it's not going over 82 degrees. Crested geckos like high humidity, but your enclosure shouldn't be soaking wet all the time. So something that I like to do is to keep their enclosures a little bit more humid at nighttime and then allow them to dry out during the day. This actually replicates what would happen in the wild. Typically as the sun goes down and things cool off a bit, the humidity rises a little bit. But then during the day when the sun is out warming things up again, the humidity drops a bit. So I like to replicate that with my crested geckos. And it's actually very, very, very simple to do that. All I do is give my crested gecko enclosures a heavy mist right before their lights go out and that's it. I don't miss them again in the morning because I like to let it dry out a little bit during the daytime. Now some people do like to miss twice a day and some people who live in drier climates might even need to miss twice a day, but where I am, once a day works fine for me. So typically overnight when the humidity is a bit higher, it stays in the like 80% plus range. But then as time goes on and the enclosure dries out, during the daytime it usually stays in the high 50s or low 60s. So to simplify it a little bit, I keep their daytime humidity around 60% and then their nighttime humidity around 80 plus percent. So if you end up putting live plants in your enclosures, you're going to find that that makes a big difference on the humidity. Live plants help to hold in humidity, so you're going to have an easier time keeping your humidity high if you have live Live plants as opposed to fake plants. The fake plants dry out really fast so they don't retain as much humidity. So keep that in mind when you're deciding how frequently you should mist their enclosure. If you have live plants you probably won't need to mist as much as if you have fake plants. And now let's talk about lighting. So crested geckos do not technically need any special lighting to survive, however I would personally recommend using a UVB bulb. I personally use UVB on all of my crested geckos and I do actually see all four of them using it and basking in it. When it comes to UVB, even though they do not technically need it to survive, I do like to provide it as it is something that they would have the option to experience in the wild, so I like to give them that option in captivity as well. If you do choose to use UVB lighting, make sure you are using something with a lower UVB output such as a 5.0 Reptisun, a 6% Arcadia bulb, or a a shade dweller Arcadia bulb. And if you are using UVB lighting, make sure your animal has plenty of hiding spots that they can use to escape the lighting so they can get away from it if they don't want to be near it. So while I do personally recommend UVB and I do believe that it is beneficial for the animals, many people keep crested geckos very successfully without UVB so it is not an absolute requirement for their care. It is just something that I personally like to use and also recommend. So what does a crested gecko eat? Wow Emma, that is a great question. Thanks, thanks Emma, thank you, thank you. So what does a crested gecko eat? Crested geckos are omnivores which means they eat both plant matter and animal matter. So typically crested geckos consume a variety of things such as insects and fruits. But feeding your pet crested gecko is very, very simple. Thanks to companies like Pangea and Rapashi, we now have these powdered mixed crested gecko diets. So inside this bag here, there's basically just a dry powder that you mix with a little bit of water and then it makes gecko food. So these packaged diets are a complete diet for your crested gecko, so if you are only feeding your crested gecko Pangea or Rapashi, that is going to sustain your gecko for its whole life. However, I also highly recommend adding live insects into your gecko's diet. I know that live insects aren't everyone's favorite thing, but they are very, very, very nutritious for your animal, and they are also very enriching for your animal. So it is perfectly fine to use a pre-made diet mix as their primary food, but I think it's also a really good idea to give them live insects here and there. When it comes to my adult geckos, I typically like to give them a powder mix about twice a week, and then I also like to give them insects about once a week. When it comes to caring for a baby gecko, I would recommend offering them fresh food every day or every two days as they get a little bit older. But once your gecko reaches adulthood, they don't need to eat nearly as much as they were when they were growing, so you can cut back feedings to just two or three times a 
week. These gecko diets also come in a variety of different flavors and formulas, and I would recommend having at least a few of them. I'm a big believer that variety is key to a healthy animal, so I think that rotating the things that you offer your gecko, even if it's just changing up the flavor, is a really good idea. And when it comes to supplements, the supplements are not overly complicated for a crested gecko. Typically, those powder diet mixes have all of the vitamins and minerals that they need. However, when you are feeding things like live insects, I would still recommend supplementing the insects with calcium. If you're using a UVB light, I would use calcium with no D3, and, and if you aren't using a UVB light, I would recommend using calcium with D3 about twice a month just to make sure that they are getting all the vitamin D that they need. And now, the last thing that I want to talk about with crested geckos is their handling. Because I know that that is an important thing to a lot of people. A lot of people, when they're getting a pet, want an animal that they can, you know, actually take out and hold. So if you're looking for an animal that is going to be super interactive and play with you the way a dog or a cat would, don't get a crested gecko. A crested gecko is not going to do that. However, as far as reptiles go, crested geckos are normally pretty good with handling. When handling a crested gecko, it is just very important that you are gentle with them. Obviously, these animals are not very big, so you need to be nice and gentle. And you also just need to be aware that they can and probably will will jump. Crested geckos are pretty jumpy geckos. Now, depending on the gecko, some will jump more than others, but just be prepared for a jumpy gecko. So if you're a bit nervous about handling them, I would probably recommend handling them like low to the ground or while sitting on a bed or something. Crested geckos are not likely to just run away from you, but know that they can move pretty fast if they want to. Now, this is a question I have been asked very, very many times when talking about reptiles, and that question is, does it bite? Now, if you're worried about getting bit by a crested gecko, I would say for the most part, you don't really have to worry. The truth is, anything that has a mouth can bite. I could bite you if I wanted to. But crested geckos are not an animal that typically will just go around biting things just because. If they're scared, they're more likely to try and just get away from you than they are to bite. And even if you do get bit by a crested gecko, you're gonna be fine, nothing's gonna happen. You know, you might bleed a tiny little bit maybe or get a small bruise, but like, you're gonna be okay. So for the most part, crested geckos tend to be pretty easy to handle. However, it is important to note that every single gecko is different, every gecko has their own personality, and some will be easier to handle than others. But if you are looking for a reptile that typically tolerates handling quite well, then a crested gecko may be a good option for you. So with all of this said and done now, I am just going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Like I mentioned earlier, it is impossible for me to cover every single aspect of an animal's care in one short video. So even if you found this video nice and helpful, please make sure you do more research outside of it. But with that said, I do truly hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you are someone who is considering a pet crested gecko, I really do hope that this helped you. If you did enjoy this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. It really helps out my channel, and it costs you nothing. And also make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more awesome animal content. And if you enjoy fun animal content, then also be sure to check out all of my social media. It will all be down in the description below, but it is all just MSAM99. So with all that said and done, I am going to go ahead and end this video here. Thank you all so much for watching. I do truly hope that you enjoyed it or found it useful, and I will see you all in my next video.